Hey guys, today I'm going to be sharing with you my 2B red pile for August and September of 2018. So, it's time for August and September reading. Uh, just a quick heads up before I talk about the new books I plan on reading. Uh, my TBR for June and July went very, very smoothly, I'm happy to say. I was a little worried uh, I would have a book that would carry over into August. Fortunately, that, that did not happen. I managed to squeeze out all of the books, and yeah, some good ones. Some, some ones that I was a little iffy about, but in general, I think a good two months of reading. So yes, um, stay tuned for all of those book reviews. I only do three book reviews a month on this channel, so yeah, uh, it will take several months for me to get to those books from June and July, but they will eventually arrive as a video here on this channel. Uh, so yeah, let's move into August and September. I think I have some good books here that I'm very, very excited about. The first five books I have here are a, a series of books that I've been wanting to get to for a very, very long time now, and I felt like it was time that I could finally read them. Uh, and this is not it for the for the series. This is, uh, this is, these books are connected to The Walking Dead universe by Robert Kirkman. Uh, the Walking Dead being a series of comic books, also a really popular TV series which I love. Uh, so yeah, these books, they are companion pieces to uh, The Walking Dead. I think they're more companion pieces to the comics. They're not companion pieces to like the TV show, I don't think. Um, so, so yeah, these are all written by Robert Kirkman and Jay Bonasenga, I think I'm pronouncing his name correctly. And yeah, this is only the first five. I looked on Goodreads and it looks like there's eight books so far. Um, I, I don't know if there's going to be more than that, or if maybe the eight books is it. Um, and yeah, I guess I'll see how I like these first five since I do have them. Uh, if, if I do enjoy these, I think I will go maybe finish the series, but I guess I'll just see how it goes. Uh, but yeah, uh, the first five in the series right now, uh, we have, I'm trying to get myself situated on my bed, you guys. <laughs> uh, I have The Walking Dead, Rise of the Governor. And yeah, that's something else with all these books. Um, my understanding is that they all have something to do with the, one of the big villains in The Walking Dead comics and on the TV show, uh, The Governor. He's a huge villain. And I think all of these books primarily are kind of focused on him, I think. Uh, and then, yeah, this one is The Walking Dead, The Road to Woodbury, and Woodbury was like the governor's establishment, like like a town where he kind of took power and whatnot during the zombie apocalypse. And then, yeah, this is The Walking Dead, The Fall of the Governor, Part 1. And then, yeah, The Walking Dead, The Fall of the Governor, Part 2. And then, yeah, the, the fifth book here is The Walking Dead Descent. And I do, I'm a, I'm a really big fan of not only the TV series, I, I personally really enjoy the TV series. I think a lot of people are falling out of love with the TV series, but I love the TV series. But yeah, I am definitely a massive fan of the graphic novel series. And yeah, since these are companion pieces to that, I'm definitely looking forward to these. I, I hope they're good. My sister, I think she's read three of these. Uh, she's she's read through these. She didn't particularly enjoy them, she told me. Uh, she said they were okay, but they weren't what she was expecting. So, so I guess I'll see if I agree or disagree <laughs> with her. The next three books I'm going to share with you guys are all books that have been published here in 2018. Uh, there's a lot of books that I've, I've purchased that have been released in 2018. And I'm kind of falling behind a little bit. So, uh, yeah, every TBR, I'm trying to kind of incorporate a few new releases in there. And yeah, oh, this came out uh, several months ago, and this is A Court of Frost and Starlight by Sarah J. Maas, and this is a companion piece to Sarah J. Maas's A Court of Thorns and Roses series. And yeah, this is just a little small novella. Um, it's it's not like totally part of the series, it's like kind of a, a middle chapter, like you don't necessarily have to sit and read this, you know. Um, 
I've just seen very negative things about this book, you guys. I'm not sure. I'm not sure what to think about that. I've seen a lot of negative reviews, like, you know, from diehard fans who love the series, but they hated this book. So I'm definitely interested to form my own opinion about it. It's definitely a pretty cover, though. Uh, yeah, if you don't know what A Court of Thorns and Roses, what the whole series is about, it, it takes place in a fantasy world involving fairies and humans, like a war between them. And it's all very magical and fantasy and action-packed and whatnot, and of course, a love story. Uh, so, yeah, hopefully I like this. <laughs> I guess I'll find out. Fatal Throne, and this has a bunch of different authors in it. We have Candace Fleming, M.T. Anderson, Stephanie Hemphill, Lisa Ann Sandell, Jennifer Donnelly, Linda Sue Park, Deborah Hoppen, Hoppen, Hopkin, Hopkinson. <laughs> I had to think about that one. But yeah, Fatal Throne. This is a collection of short stories written by all these various different authors that I just listed. And uh, each author is telling a story about one of the wives of Henry VIII. So yeah, Henry VIII, he had six wives. So yeah, you got six stories. Plus, uh, someone is writing like little chapters for Henry VIII, I think, in between each wife. Uh, so yeah, this is young adult. Uh, I am looking forward to this just to see, even though I'm very familiar with The Six Wives of Henry VIII, because I think this is supposed to be kind of a beginning piece for young readers if you want to get into history and Henry VIII and whatnot. But I'm still looking forward to this to kind of see how it's written, if, if this is good for new beginners to get into. But yeah, I am, I'm, I'm, I'm excited nonetheless. It sounds really interesting, you know, having these kind of separate stories and whatnot. The Death of Mrs. Westaway by Ruth Ware. This is a mystery thriller that just came out some time ago. Uh, I've really been enjoying Ruth Ware so far. I loved The Girl in Cabin 10. I really liked The Lion Game. So I'm hoping I really enjoyed this as well. And uh, yeah, what I can remember from the plot summary for this, it's about a woman. Her, her grandparents have been dead for a while, but for some reason she gets a mysterious letter from her grandparents. I guess that they wrote maybe decades ago, uh, but yeah, she's been bequeathed some sort of inheritance and an estate, and she has to go there, and uh, yes, like I said, some sort of mystery thriller. The synopsis is very, very vague, uh, which I'm kind of glad about. I kind of, I, I really want to go into this book knowing nothing, you know, I don't really want to know anything about this book, but yeah, I have, I have faith that I will enjoy this, and s since I did enjoy two of her previous books. The next book I plan on reading is a book that I've had for quite a while now, and I kind of I'm kind of in the mood to get around to it. It's kind of funny that I have two Henry VIII related books for this TBR this these two months. Uh, but yeah, this is Guilt by Catherine Longshore, and this is historical fiction about the fifth wife of King Henry VIII, uh, Catherine Howard. Uh, but yeah, this is being told through the point of view of Catherine Howard's, I guess her her best friend, her lady-in-waiting, something like that. And uh, yeah, this is a young adult. Uh, I, I, I have a feeling, because I really like the TV series Rain, which was about like a young Mary Queen of Scots, I have a feeling this book is going to be very much like that TV series, <laughs> you know? Uh, so yeah, I, I definitely can't wait to get to this. Uh, I really love the story of poor Catherine Howard. Her, she, she was like the youngest wife of Henry VIII. Yeah, she got tragically beheaded at a very, very a young age. Uh, a very young age. And yes, yeah, she just has such a fascinating story. Very, very sad and tragic, considering how young she was. So, TBR Jar Time. Uh, that's nine books. I think I can squeeze out a tenth book, you guys. I, I think I can. Uh, I might not finish it by the end of September. It, it might kind of carry through a few days into the next TBR, but I do. I think I can manage to, to, to pretty pretty much squeeze out a tenth book. So, let's shake this up. <laughs> and yes, it's a very full. You know, I never know where to pick. It's like, should I pick from the very top? Should I pick on the side? Should I pick in the middle? Should I pick, like, deep down in there? It's a lot to debate. <laughs> so let's see. Oh my god, open. Open. Okay, there it goes. Woo! 
So from my TBR jar, I have picked out Broadchurch by Aaron Kelly. And this is based on the story by series creator Chris Chibnall. Um, this is a book, if you can't, there's a little thing up here if you can't read it. Uh, this is a, an advanced reader's edition. Oh my god, I did not win this. Oh my god, I've had this lying around since 2014. Yeah, guys, oh my freaking god. Oh my, oh, I'm a terrible reader. Uh, I won this book on Goodreads, apparently, back in 2014. <laughs> You guys, oh my god, I feel kind of old. I feel bad. Um, anyway, let's move on from that. Uh, this is Broadchurch. Uh, this is based off of the uh, TV series of the same name that starred Olivia Coleman and David Tennant and also Jodie Whittaker, who's going to be the new doctor for Doctor Who, you guys. Yay! Uh, yeah, uh, this book... Like, this book is not the inspiration for the TV series, if that makes sense. Like, this book was written after the TV series. Like, this is the novel, the novel format of the TV series. Um, I, I love the TV series. Uh, Broadchurch, if you don't know what Broadchurch is about, it was, it was a, it was a three-season, uh, three-season BBC production. And, uh, the first season was about this little boy, Danny who who's found murdered on the beach at Broadchurch. And so yeah, the whole first season is the investigation. The second season is like the trial. And then the third season is is essentially kind of the aftermath of Danny's murder. And yeah, the, those three seasons of Broadchurch just some of the best television I've ever watched. So well acted, so well written and directed, so emotional. And uh, yeah, I was really happy when I won a copy of this on Goodreads back in 2014. I just haven't gotten around to it at all. So I am, I'm definitely very happy that I picked this out since this is something very, very old that I've yet to get to. And uh, yeah, man, the writing, the writing is pretty gigantic in this, you guys. I think, I think I'll be able to actually finish this fairly quickly. It, it is, it's over 400 pages, but yeah, I, I, I might, this is probably the type of book I'll be able to read like a lot at a time. And plus, yeah, there's like, yeah, there's like a bunch of chapters. Yeah, big font. There's like over 60 something chapters. Yeah, I think I'll get through this very, very quickly. Yeah, I'm so glad I picked this though. So you guys, that's it for my TBR. In the comments below, what books are you guys going to read? What books of mine are you excited about? Just let me know. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you like this video, you may like these other videos. Bye guys.